We're joined today with Benjamin Fulford and my girlfriend Nami, who's going to help me out. I'm, we're talking about a lot of interesting things, I, I think. And he started first off saying that um, he's published over 30 books in Japanese and is having difficulties getting them published in English because of the, the difficult nature of the topic. Um, so uh, we were talking just what, what, what was the, you know, the Berlin Book Fair? Well, they had, they had 11 offers to publish. But any time a publishing company seriously tries to publish my book in English, they freeze their bank account hmm. and heavies show up. So they really do not want me to publish a book because what they're most afraid of is um, having honest intellectuals figure out what's really going on. Yeah. The people who still believe the official version of events. Hmm. You know, the media version of our reality. Well, yeah, the thing is... They have to create a pretense that they're doing good. Hmm. So, for example, you cannot say you invade Iraq because you want to kill people and steal oil. You have to you say, control the region. we want to get rid of a tyrant and spread democracy. So that <laughs> people think, oh, okay, it's a good thing we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And if they lose that facade, yeah. they lose their power. That's what? why they have to keep the brainwashed intellectuals brainwashed. When you say brainwashed um, intellectuals, I've heard of other words uh, such as, um, you know, controlled left intellectuals or... Uh, oh yeah, so they, look, they, they, con they compartmentalize. Mm. They, each person is in a box mm. and they try to keep their knowledge limited so they can't see the big picture. So sure, yeah, they always control the opposition mm. as well, but more to the point is that they they conceal the truth. Hmm. So, I was a financial journalist for 25 years. And, and with Forbes you know, Asia for how before many? Before that, my first job I covered the Bank of Japan and the Ministry of Finance. And all those years, nobody ever told me that the Federal Reserve Board was privately owned. Mm -hmm. And if you took every single financial and economics course available in any Western university, hmm. they will never teach you that the Federal Reserve Board is privately owned. It's one of those uh, little <clears throat> facts that they fail to teach. And if you think about it, if you have ownership of the dollar printing press, mm -hmm. you have godlike powers. Right. You are a Babylonian god king. You can hire all the intellectuals you want, all mm -hmm. the goons you want. You can buy the, what they did. In fact, is they bought the textbook companies, mm -hmm. and then they bought out the universities, and they bought politicians. And there's even a, a Rockefeller University in America now, isn't it? My brother got a PhD there. Right. And so, uh, what was Nelson that? Rockefeller and David Rockefeller offered him jobs. So, you know, we, he still, he works for Deutsche Bank, which is a, you know, a Nazi front. Cool. So, so uh, not, uh, not, not like, quite like peas in a pod, you and your brother? Well, you know, <laughs> rebels are always younger brothers. <laughs> What I, what I wanted to start off with the, with the interview was um, a very general question, and I'll put it to you that what are the great issues facing the world today? So, okay, this, this is a. I'll put First it to of you all, because as a species, we have been very, very incompetent at managing the planet. We have wiped out more than 30% of all living creatures on this planet, mm -hmm. all the species, in the past century alone. And this is the biggest extinction, mass extinction event since the dinosaurs were wiped out 65 million years ago. Yep. Furthermore, about 50 million people die unnecessarily uh, because of malnutrition and poverty every year. And this is all totally preventable. You can have a massive increase of population simultaneously with a massive increase in ecosystems. We have the technology. And what's happened was some gangsters who took over the petroleum industry mm -hmm. basically used murder, bribery, uh, threats, everything they could to prevent the development of free energy technology. Right, that's a biggie. That's a real big um, point. Um, I spoke on, the, on my radio show in Sydney with um, uh, an inventor. Well, not quite a, He's a researcher and I'd say an inventor, he's a pioneer in, um, well, high energy, high voltage and uh, energy and also, he's called John Hutchison, he's, he's developed some sort of 
dynamo that, well, it, I, could, I wouldn't call it a perpetual motion machine, but it uh, seems to draw energy okay. from the ether. Well, and, here's um, a very important point. You just raised the perpetual, there are certain things they, they keep plugging into our brains time after time. It's like a switch. The yeah, second that, no. law of thermodynamics, yeah. okay? Think about it. Yep. Since when did science have laws? Science is based on evidence. Yep. There is no second law of thermodynamics. You, 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 you can't get more, I mean, heat, heat energy is transferred, Energy, the universe is made out of energy. It's, it's transferred, not created. That's the general vibe. Yeah. Well, you know, they say it dissipates. But <coughs> it, it is a cycle. It's like an endless hmm. uh, loop. Yep. So you can take the energy out of water, hmm. and then it becomes water again. Hmm. And, and this is the fact that they're, they're trying to hide. And, and this is very, very important because if you really understand the implications of free energy, hmm. it means basically we could have trillions and trillions of human beings living throughout the universe, each living like a billionaire does hmm. today. That's what it means. Yep. But the thing is, um, the people who have control, I mean, uh you are, this the question I asked you, and you give a very different uh, answer to what David Rockefeller himself asked. You had an interview with David Rockefeller in a hotel um, lobby or a room, special room somewhere, and um, you asked a similar question to that. I'm not sure. It's a rough paraphrase, and he said that the great issues facing the world today were global warming and the war on terror. And uh, I, I, is that correct? I think it's correct, as I as I remember the interview. Okay, but, so yeah. what he really meant was a war between the nuclear lobby and the petroleum lobby. Okay. But each of them still have the fixation on centralized control. That's right. Mm -hmm. Who gets the monthly bills that they charge everybody? Is it the nuclear people or is it the oil people? So he's avoiding the real topic. And after I turned off the camera, I told him about my great grandfather. He said, oil was already very well established when electricity showed up. Uh -huh. This is a very revealing statement. In other words, we have this huge monopoly with vast power, and we were in a position to stop anything else from coming. And that's what they did. They, they stopped the electricity. Uh -huh. They dismantled the, uh, the trolleys. You know, the street the cars. Electric, electric trolleys, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they were everywhere. You see them in the old movies. Yep. They bought them up and dismantled them because they wanted to force people to buy Petroleum. Carcinogen producing petroleum powered vehicles. Hmm. And there's a movie, the, the Who Killed the Electric Car, which goes into um, why, uh, why it's not profitable to run electric cars for, for those um, petroleum industries. But um, so is it is it just about that particular thing? I mean, do you think it's about the petroleum control, and power. control of petroleum? I mean, Rockefeller, Standard Oil, it, it is a, a mega corporation and uh, he's got lo all of his other associated yeah. petroleum corporations, but he's also the, the in, in charge of um, the Fed, you know, and, yeah, and well, the, see, the, the princes what, and Citibank and all those other. What so, these people say, control. okay, what these people say is that if everybody becomes so rich they don't have to work, they're not going to work, there will be no social cohesion, society will disintegrate, but that is nonsense. BS, basically. BS, yeah. yes, of course. A lot of people will quit drudge jobs yeah. and go exploring or whatever. So what? Why not? 